Welcome to PSG Health Insights. In this podcast, John Crank, Head of Healthcare PSG Consult Corporate, looks at the movement of key indicators and cost drivers in the medical scheme industry over the preceding 12 months. As decision makers in your company, this information will be critical when you review the healthcare funding arrangement of your employees. Hello and thank you for joining me for the Vital Science presentation um, in which I'm going to once again um, be looking at the various uh, indicators that we use to assess the medical schemes, concluding with um, our view on the, on the medical schemes out there. I'm going to start by looking at the risk claims ratio. Now, as you may recall, 2009 was an unusually high claiming year, which resulted in many schemes introducing, introducing measures like benefit reductions and co-payments, stricter protocol management, provider network arrangements like the designated service providers, and also increasingly referral management. As a result, during 2010 we saw recovery by most schemes, and uh, the good news is that this has continued in 2011 with further improvement in the risk claims ratio as measured across all the medical schemes. The next slide I've called Size Counts, and uh, the reason why will become evident shortly. Um, the scheme's long-term sustainability is directly linked to the underlying membership profile, and this in turn is generally influenced by the scheme's size. In the medical scheme industry, size definitely counts. Uh, the larger the scheme, the more diverse the membership, and therefore usually the more favorable the risk pool. Size, is usually, size also usually means greater stability in claims experience which translates to more predictable costs and therefore annual increases. Large schemes derive economies of scale that leads to enhanced bargaining power with service providers and designated service providers, which is absolutely critical in the current environment. Schemes also increasingly being selective about the new membership profile um, of members they take on, as this is uh, a critical feature going forward on these schemes. The next slide is the average age per beneficiary. There's been a slight increase from 31.5 years to 30.31.6 uh, years in the industry. However, um, this, the, the closed schemes are somewhat younger than the open medical schemes in, in that the average age is 29.5 years relative to the open schemes where the average beneficiary age is 33.3 years. Um, this is as a consequence of the uh, open enrollment on open schemes relative to the op often mandatory membership of closed medical schemes. It's therefore critical for open schemes to attract young and healthy members to improve their profile. Um, otherwise, that scheme will simply age by a year every year. Um, and it's also uh, very important to offset the members being lost to GEMS, the Government em Employees Medical Scheme, um, or in fact, those, me the, those members leaving the medical schemes environment altogether. Um, a scheme like Momentum Health, for instance, has been particular su particularly successful in attracting young members and in so doing, dropping their average age over the past few years. The pensioner age, um, we've seen a slight increase here from 7.5 to 7.8%. Um, and the, in the closed uh, medical schemes, this is um, somewhat lower at only 5.1%. And once again, this is a concern if a scheme is unable to address this. And this is going to be particularly uh, difficult in our view for small schemes with high pensioner ratios. And it's probably going to increase the pressure on them to seek out um, suitable merger opportunities. The next slide is healthcare benefits paid from the risk pool. Overall expenditure paid from the risk pool, um, and remember this excludes claims paid from savings accounts, increased by 9.9% from 76.4 billion rand to over 84 billion rand um, in 2011. Expenditure on hospitalization actually increased in line with this, contrary to a lot of expectations, by about 9.8% from 30.9 billion to just over 34 billion rand. Um, in addition, expenditure on GPs increased by 10.1%, so also pretty much in line with that, from about 4.8 billion rand to 5.3 billion rand. However, of some concern is that the expenditure on specialists increased by 13.6% from 17.1 billion rand to 19.5 billion rand. And I think we're going to see ongoing work there by the medical schemes uh, to adopt some kind of referral strategy to drive members back to GPs. On the next slide, we look at the utilization of private hospitals. Um, this is in line and in fact slightly lower than 2010. The total admissions per thousand beneficiaries uh, for the past year was 280.6. However, this still um, is, a, is a mind warping number in that there were 2.3 million admissions in 2011, which equates to just less than 197,000 admissions per month. 
The next slide we're going to look at is the net healthcare result versus the net surplus or deficit. Encouraging the open schemes showed further recovery from the net healthcare result in 2009 where they made a loss overall of 1.7 billion rand um, through to the half a billion rand loss uh, in terms of net healthcare result in 2010 to post a net healthcare result of only 47 million rand deficit in 2011. So definitely a move in the right direction. However, we've needed to take into account that this improvement was driven largely by a reduction in relevant healthcare expenditure, in addition to the corrective benefit structuring measures implemented by the schemes after 2009. The schemes are still under pressure, and that's illustrated by the fact that only 11 of the 26 showed net healthcare surpluses. Um, after taking into account the investment uh, income, however, open schemes posted a healthy 1.9 billion rand surplus, and only three schemes managed to fail to post um, net surpluses overall. Next slide is the non-healthcare expenditure. Um, you may be aware that the Council for Medical Schemes monitors non-healthcare expenditure very closely. It's something that they're pedantic about. And they're wanting to move schemes towards a total non-healthcare um, cost of about 10%, excluding acquisition costs. Now, we've taken this um, data from the Global Credit Rating Reports, and it's very evident that there's been a steady decline in the non-healthcare costs in both nominal and real terms. Um, and this is encouraging for members because this means there's more money available to pay either for your claims or to go for reserves, which then also ultimately translates to lower increases. So good news. If we look at the industry solvency, um, the regulations require schemes to hold accumulated funds of exactly 25% of gross premium income. Uh, this is to act as a buffer against unexpected higher claims experienced due to things like the changes in membership profile, large individual claims or potentially catastrophic events which drive up um, uh, claims overall. Accumulated reserves are therefore a good indicator of a, of a security available in a scheme and their ability to meet claims um, from the members. Um, however, we need to point out that this is only a guide because um, if a scheme is experiencing rapid membership growth um, and potentially displaying a good profile, um, this will actually dil dilute the reserves which drives the reserves potentially to under 25%. And conversely, a scheme losing members who have a good profile, which is obviously not a good thing for that scheme, will actually experience a release in reserves, so you'll see that reserve number going up. So you need to be able to read through that number. Um, we need to point out that the Council for Medical Schemes is currently engaging uh, the industry to possibly refine the statutory solvency levels based on things like the underlying risk profiles. And, and this is good news because this will lead to more appropriate reserve levels and therefore enhance capital efficiency. Um, all of those billions of rands that we know, over 16 billion rand of reserves lying in the open medical schemes will then be able to be put to use for members far more effectively. Um, just on this slide, it's, it's, it's evident over here that the um, open scheme solvency levels have stabilised above the um, current requirements, uh, required solvency level of 25%. Next, we look at the schemes with solvency levels below 25%. All of these schemes will be monitored against um, the business plan submitted to the Council for Medical Schemes um, in which they will illustrate or, or demonstrate to the Council how they'll get back to the required level of 25%. We need to point out though that, um, as I mentioned in the previous slide, many of the schemes with solvency levels below 25% are there because of membership growth, which is not necessarily a bad thing, like for instance with Discovery and Momentum Health. Um, I need to point out that from the data you're seeing on the screen that NEMAS has uh, merged with Resolution in the past few months um, and Resolution's up, also up on the dashboard so um, we're very interested to see what happens um, in view of the strong dissolution of Resolution's reserves uh, with that merger with NEMAS and we'll keep a close um, watch on that one and keep you appraised. If we look at the administrator market share, um, there was a fair amount of administrator consolidation during 2011 with uh, the biggest being Metropolitan and Momentum merging their administration entities. And if we then move immediately to slide 13, um, we can see that Metropolitan, Discovery and MedScheme have emerged as the dominant uh, um, administration concerns and uh, we don't see that changing in the near future. Next slide looks at the trend in the number of schemes. Um, now, there's been a trend of consolidation in open schemes over the last uh, few years, and this is something that we've continued to see, and in fact see continuing, due to schemes seeking scale, as mentioned previously during uh, the, the podcast. Um, just need to point out schemes that you have recently merged, or in the process of doing so, uh, that are not included in the Council for Medical Schemes report from 2011, are NEMAS, which went into Resolution Health, 
and Prasanna, which is on the move into um, Bonitas um, as we speak. If we look at the open medical scheme market share, uh, that membership has now grown to just over 2.1 million members in total. Uh, Discovery Health slice of this is now just short of 50%, so an increasingly dominant position being taken there. Some of the membership moves we've seen in 2012 include the loss of the state pensioners um, by MediHelp, which over 20,000 members, which um, interestingly enough actually augurs well for that scheme in our view. Um, further attrition at MedShield, and then also Momentum Health, um, which has had um, quite uh, interesting membership growth where they now have over 100,000 um, members. Also, um, bear in mind that the Prasanna merger into Bonitas, um, although that number will only move Bonitas to a more dominant position at the end of 2012, um, I think the overall point over here is that we'll see further concentration of membership into fewer schemes increasingly going forward. If we look at the membership movement then on the open medical schemes, um, in the past we've, we've highlighted schemes that have gained or lost more than a thousand members um, in the preceding year. This year we haven't done that and the re simple reason why is because it applies almost across the board. So there have been big swings um, either way. Um, the net result, however, is that there have only been about 9,800 members um, moving overall. So there's negligible movement at face value. However, if we strip out the membership growth at Discovery, the industry actually lost members and that, that's a concern overall, particularly in view of the fact that they're trying to attract to younger, healthier profile members. And the single reason for that, uh, or sorry, the simple largest um, reason for that is the loss of the members to, to GEMS, the Government Employees Medical Scheme, where I think increasingly civil servants are finding the subsidy structures uh, a, a value proposition that's hard to ignore. If we look at the criteria for our house view, um, they're simply put, um, schemes that reduce the scheme type, or we're, we're after reducing the scheme type duplication as far as possible, so we want to have a, a blend of schemes available to you as employers, um, the reserves in those schemes must be in excess of 15% and improving, so moving in the right direction. The strategy of the fund needs to be a positive one. Um, there must be a responsible growth strategy, so we don't want to see any unnecessary or needless um, uh, merger activity simply for the sake of getting the numbers. So a sound volume and risk profile. Um, and then a good relationship with the fund um, and the administrator. Uh, also reputable and experienced trustees. And a global credit rating um, superior to A um, if they participate in the global credit ratings. Now on our house view, um, you can see on the screen over here that we've categorized the schemes into three types of schemes. Firstly, if we give a, a scheme a clean bill of health, then if it's stable but there's room for improvement, or if a scheme is under intensive care. Um, the, the, the notable moves that I just want to highlight quickly um, is that uh, and, and sorry, wherever you see an asterisk, that scheme um, is one where we are keeping a close eye on, on, on that, that particular scheme um, to potentially change the rating or to assess whether we've moved them for the correct reason. Um, but the notable moves are that we've taken MediHelp from stable um, up to clean bill of health. And uh, we've moved MedShield, Seasware and Resolution Health down from their respective categories. And in the case of MedShield, um, uh, all the way to intensive care. As you probably recall, um, historically medical scheme inflation has always consistently been above the consumer price index. And last year's average um, increase across the, uh, the medical schemes was just in excess of 9%. Um, interestingly, this increase actually showed a positive narrowing in the gap and the, the disparity between the medical scheme increases and CPI narrowed um, quite substantially. But in our view, there's, there's still a broader problem underlying everything over here, and that is um, if, you, if you're a medical scheme member um, and you are receiving CPI increases uh, from a long-term sustainability point of view, if the medical scheme is consistently passing on higher increases than, than inflation, this actually identifies um, a problem and something ultimately has to give and to us really speaks to the reason why members buy down in medical schemes. Um, the Council for Medical Scheme targets an annual increase for medical schemes in the range of CPI plus 3%. And, and in our view, um, at the end of this year, many schemes are going to be hard pressed to meet this, um, especially those with our tariff arrangements uh, with provider groups. To conclude with then, um, as we stated on the previous slide, uh, schemes are going to be challenged to meet the Council for Medical Schemes target for increases going into next year. We think that uh, increasingly schemes will seek scale to improve their provider networks to help address them, uh, to help address the increasing healthcare costs um, by implementing, for instance, specialist networks. Uh, we also think that these strong schemes will continue to gain strength 
Um, as I mentioned, Discovery Health is already in excess of 49% of the open scheme market on its own. And uh, the five biggest schemes actually approach something like 80% of the market. It's very important to understand that some of the critical issues facing schemes at the moment are not of their own making. Um, NHI, for instance, is one of those uh, where there will be a long-term impact. Um, but interesting on the flip side is that the upgraded public facilities may actually help medical schemes enter uh, designated service providers with the public facilities um, in full confidence going forward. And it'll be nice to see some competition between the public and the private facilities um, in future. However, overall, don't be misled by the improved financial performance of the schemes over the last two years. Um, claims ratios, um, from what we understand during 2012, are definitely under pressure. And we expect to see more merger activity, especially amongst the smaller schemes where they'll seek to scale. Um, the pricing commission proposed by the Department of Health is absolutely crucial to help schemes address uh, another of their main challenges. Um, just a, th a thought though, and this is this, it's probably not a silver bullet, um, and there are systemic issues which need to be addressed too. For instance, um, just from a macro scale, we need to change our, our whole healthcare system from a curative one to a more preventative one. Um, as a concluding remark then, remember that uh, although sometimes we think we live in a silo, the private healthcare system is also um, part of a bigger macro picture. And positive developments in the public healthcare space definitely have a positive knock-on in, in, in the private space too. Um, and we therefore keenly anticipate feedback on the developments in the national health um, insurance pilot sites, uh, their 10 around the country, and also uh, to hear about the progress being made with the um, implementation of the re-engineered primary healthcare um, system in South Africa. Thank you very much for watching the podcast and best of luck during the year. -end. So in spite of the relative stability in the medical scheme industry at the moment, it seems they are facing some serious challenges which will impact on their viability going forward. This means that selection of a scheme meeting the needs of your employees will become more important than ever, particularly in the view of the expected merger activity as schemes seek out opportunities to gain scale. Your PSG Consult Corporate Consultant will be able to provide you with valuable insight in order to ensure that you remain informed and are able to make timeliest changes to your healthcare program should the need arise.